from the Toyota Soccer Center in Frisco, Texas. Welcome back to MLS Next Cup. U19 round of 32 match here between the Barca Residency Academy out of Arizona and the home side, FC Dallas. Let's take another look at the tournament format. 32 teams in each age group. U15 through 19, single elimination will crown the champions at the end of the weekend. Next weekend, it is going to be a ton of fun. Justin Glancy here alongside Rodney Wallace and Jamie Watson starting lineups for this one. You take a look at it, some really talented players on both sides. Lucas Sawinski with 15 goals this season for Barca. Dallas the home side, though, and as we take a look at our keys to the match brought to you by Adidas, what stands out to you here, Rod? For me, for FC Dallas, it is important for them to, to impose the tempo of the match, being the, the home team, being the the quote-unquote host city of this of this tournament for them to be able to hold on and set the tempo for Barcelona is going to be possession with purpose we know that they're a team that likes to keep the ball but can we see some urgency can we see some creativity and can we see some goals from from this squad yeah those are our keys to the game brought to you by Adidas it is going to be a fun one and uh, as you said before when players walk on the pitch wearing that Barcelona kit it just, uh, as the kids say nowadays, it hits different. Let's start down to a guy who hits different on the sideline. Jay hey, Watson, what's up? Hey. I love that introduction from you, Justin. When you look at these two sides, you have the Barca Residency Academy based out of Casa Grande, Arizona. They have a little bit of a different setup being residency based, living, breathing this every moment of every day. This is an opportunity to come here and showcase what they work on day in and day out there. And then on the flip side for FC Dallas, this is a storied club that has 31 homegrown players that have progressed through the ranks all the way up to the first team. So with that, now these players know FC Dallas, one of the premier clubs in developing talent within their own ranks. They understand the style of play that will resonate with the first team. If and when these players are able to make their debut with the club, this is the opportunity to take the moment, showcase their abilities, and hopefully one day end up with the first team. Thanks so much, Jamie. Barca in the regular season was 14-1-7. and Dallas was 7-4-3. and Winner of this match moves on to the U19 round of 16 to play the winner of Empire United and Bethesda Soccer Club. And, uh, well, we have a qu early question for jersey ratings, and I don't think uh, it's even worth us saying. Are we talking about, we're Barca, talking about right? the sizzle ranking. Is that what you're talking about right there? The sizzle bacon. We're talking about the sizzle ranking. How many hot sauce bottles are we giving these jerseys? The classic Barcelona jerseys, for me, unbeatable. I'll give them a 9 out of 10 just because of the fact that they are here in Dallas in this tournament, and we get to see a jersey with this much history. It's very dope to see. FC Dallas, I love what they're doing right now with the with the off blue, changing it up a little bit. It's nice to see that that it's almost as if it's a third kit, but now the game has changed and and, and appearance is important. All these kits are important. That's a big tackle right there. Sending an early message. I don't mind it. Setting the tempo of the game. If you're Dallas, you're playing at home. You're playing against a team that um, just because of the colors of the jerseys themselves, they they uh, they hold a lot of weight. So if you're Dallas, you come into this match and you set the tempo. A tackle here, a tackle there. I don't mind it. The goalkeepers, Austin Valdez for Barca and Aaron Salinas for FC Dallas. Uh, talking about the uh, sizzle rankings on the kits, we know Baby Blue has a special place in the heart of Jamie Watson. So I think that's uh, the way that he's probably leaning for this one as Barca comes on attack for the first time. Good play defensively there by Dallas's Tariq Scott, who has had a big year. He's appeared in 18 matches between U17 and U19. Rodney, there are six players suiting up for FC Dallas in this match that started the season at U17 and now have been promoted to U19. And that is a true testament of <clears throat> the hard work that these young players have been have been doing. And it's not just hard work, but it's also the consistency to be able to to with, withhold the pressure. Excuse me, that was a great play. Um, to be able to withstand the pressure and to be able to make it from one level to the next. And then for them now, the the next question is, can they make it to the professional ranks? And back to our Twitch family, by the way, we are back here. Um, 
we appreciate you guys. Uh, we're here for your comments. We're here for, for your questions. Let's have a little bit of fun. Maybe uh, some match predictions. Uh, we can talk about Jamie Watson um, all we want today. So don't hold back on, on, on any banter with, uh, with Jamie and, and, and a guy of his, uh, of his size. Early corner for Barca. Shot well over the bar there for Miles Lyons, who has two goals this season. So in league play, Barca was 8-0-3, had 27 points. First in the Southwest Division. Flex, 22 points, 6-1-4. Second in the Southwest. Uh, pretty even records for FC Dallas, both in league play and flex play. Finished near the top of the Frontier Division. But, you know, what kind of advantage is it to, to play at the place that you call home? Well, it, it's it's comfort, right? You're used to, to training on these fields every single day. You're used to, to walking these grounds. So um, it is important for them to feel that and to, to embrace the fact that somebody else is trying to come into your house and, and basically take over take over your room. So it's about defending your, your home turf and, and making yourself available. Knight Pickering getting back to his left foot. Shooting yeah. stars! What a start for Dallas! Strong start from Dallas. Great ball, great run. Keeping the defenders guessing and making sure he is so composed in front of the goal to be able to make a cutback. And then with the left foot just being composed and just putting the ball in the back of the net like that. But his willingness to run right here, keeping the ball, being strong, being aware of where the defender is, and making sure that right there, skirt, gets enough space between him and the man. Gets a bit lucky with the deflection, but... That's the reward from the hard work and, and from the from the vision, creativity, and ability of this player. For Pickering, it's his 10th goal of the season. He's one of those who began at U17, now at U19 for Dallas, and I don't think that uh, they could have drawn up a better start. Three minutes into the match to be up 1-0 at home versus Barcelona. You couldn't have drawn it any more perfectly than that, Justin. Second time today we've seen an early goal yesterday we saw both matches that we broadcast live for you go a while before a tally see how Barca responds back on attack a foul in the middle of the pitch after a good run by Samuel Mendoza and a big opportunity coming for a response for Barca take another look at it what do you think about the call Pretty easy one. Fair to fair, fair enough. That's a, that's a, that's an interesting challenge um, in that place of the field. But uh, the player, the Barcelona player, does a great job of, of putting himself in that situation, and that is just uh, the fact that he keeps the ball, makes sure that he is attacking, and makes sure that he is uh, really providing um, a good space for him and, and his team to to go up uh, to go up a goal with his free kick so close to. So close to the goal. So Winsky right into the wall. He is ever dangerous. As as we said, 15 goals this season. And here on the Twitch, um, I'm reading, and yes, that ball, that ball was was perfect. I'm reading what an excellent run, and and these are things that this team practices because they see they see the first team players, they see Paul Ariola, they see. How, uh, how Ariola makes his runs. They see a player like that basically committing himself to to, to what the team uh, the, what the team shape is and what the other that defenders give him. So if the, the, the high, if the line is high, they're able to, to exploit that space, and that's exactly what, what Dallas did there. We had a question about basically uh, what is a residency academy, and our guy Jamie Watson described that perfectly for everyone, but... Can we also just talk a little bit about what is the relationship between the Barca Residency Academy and obviously the Spanish teams? We'll get into that in a little bit when we uh, talk with Jamie. And in, in, in fact, just the fact that you are embracing that badge and, and, and you're, you're wearing a, a jersey and representing a club that, that means so much to to the world to the world game and to, to be able to represent them here in the states it's just a big uh, that's a big honor within itself so in order for you to be in this club you have to be elite and i'm excited to see what these players have let's see what the opportunity presents for barca here good job to win possession though by dallas which leads one nothing here in the seventh the ball, minute the justin galanti rodney wallace jamie watson our entire tremendous crew right now as we uh 
are a couple minutes into this match. Temperature is 93 degrees here in Frisco. Feels like 95. Humidity is 35%. Uh, I have no idea what that means, but I just read it because I see it on the app. It means that it's really, really hot. That's what it means, Justin. It feels that it's, that it's hot and it's muggy. Emmanuel Martinez drops it back for Diego Hernandez. You know, later on tonight, actually, uh, there will be a match. North Texas SC, the FC Dallas second team, will be playing its MLS Next Pro match. Wonder how many of these uh, players here are going to head over and watch that. And and that is it's so great to have because um, North Texas right now in the MLS Next Pro level, they've been doing so many great things um, with head coach Pamaduka, who has come in and basically, um, I wouldn't say just changed the the trajectory of of, of this club at this level, but he has uh, bought into to the the Dallas style of play that he come, he has come in he has complimented the club well he he has believed in his players his players trust him and he is a he's a players coach somebody that I personally had the pleasure of playing with and to me he was a mentor he still is a mentor he's a good friend but he's a winner and he knows how to how to get the message across to his players and that's why right now they are so successful shout out to my guy Paul man doing big things it's good to see it Easy first touch for Aaron Salinas here, but a bit of a miss hit there as he sends it over the sideline. 1-0 lead for Dallas. Round of 32 here at the U19 level. And now uh, we've gotten a chance to see all the age groups here and everything, and this has been so much fun. Great crowds on hand. Great one for this match as they're has been and honestly we were talking about this on the walk out yesterday could not ask for a better setting for this event cannot you cannot have uh you, you don't it's not often that you get the opportunity to play um in a in a world-class uh training center basically with the stadium uh just uh, an eyesight away there, there's no better motivation than that to, to be able to see yourself and and know where you can go and play right across the street Good run there by Tariq Scott, and he draws the foul. As it's been a very good start for Dallas, obviously, getting the early goal, but it seems like they've really gotten the counterattack going as well. And then that, that's so important right there for, for Tariq right there to push the ball along, um, recognizing his speed, recognizing his size, but also... That's exactly what the Barcelona defender had to do. He had no other option but to take him down because if it was not because of the because of that foul, he would have been um, in front of goal. So I don't mind the tackle. You got to do what you got to do at times. Yellow card was issued there, and a free kick coming. Ball comes in, parried away from trouble, all the way back out towards midfield onto the foot of Bowen McLeod. The corner here for Dallas, Ty Reynolds. Two real good questions for both of you guys, I guess, here. Let's go. Uh, Brian. Prime Ronaldinho or Prime Messi? That's the first question. Oof. Don't think about it too much. Ronaldinho first was answer. just a beautiful thing to watch. He was just just so smooth and, and, and the joy of the game. But for me personally, watching Ronaldinho play just, just made me happy. One of the players that I personally looked up to, just because of what he had to offer um, in the in the creativity part of the game, the joy of the game, the celebrations, the that the ease that he played with, but the strength and the his, his knowledge of the game, unbelievable player. To this day, I still watch his highlight tapes on YouTube. Don't get me wrong. And, but uh, Messi, I mean, Messi's Messi's pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I said He's don't good. think about it too much, and you certainly thought about it a lot, which I'm impressed <laughs> with. Jamie, your thoughts? Look, Ronaldinho for the entertainment value, but Messi for the effectiveness. <laughs> all right. Hey, it's that simple. The second greatest of all time. Wait, wait, wait. What was your answer? Messi. Uh, what? So the reason I said don't think too much about that one is the second one is going to require some thought. Uh, Mount Rushmore Careful. of all-time Barca players. Careful, Rodney. Don't, don't, you do, don't, hurt don't, don't, don't start don't start this right now, Danny. <laughs> uh, all time, let's see. I think you got a Danny Alves. And you know why I say that? Just because of the amount of cups that he's won for that club. And to be able to yeah, to leave the club, point. come back, what is he, 36, 38 years old, and now to go back and, and start again for Barcelona. With that amount of games that you play as a professional in, in, in the Liga, 
it's impressive, and that just shows like really enjoying the game and being respective of, of what the game brings to you, and, and just embracing it. That's what it'll it'll give you. It'll bring you longevity. Does Javi make the list? Uh, <laughs> him and Iniesta both make the list. So we sure. got three. So we need one more then. Does Pep make the list? Oh, for what he's done as a player and a manager. Wow. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, then you're leaving Messi off because there's four. Does Luis Enrique make the it, it, There's just so many. There's so many players that that have come through there. That's a tough one. I mean, there's there's a, there's a B team, too, the, the Mount Rushmore. There's what would that a C be called? You were telling that. me the name of the B, uh, the B team, Mount Rushmore. What was it again you were saying? <laughs> hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block you, bro. I am going to block you. So uh, an interesting question off the news yesterday about Gareth Bale, obviously, coming to play for LAFC. Do either of you think Ronaldo or Messi are ever coming to MLS? Jamie, I think, Talk to I, us. Think, I think Messi first before Ronaldo would come to MLS. And why is that? Give us the why, though. Messi has a house in Miami. Okay. He spent some time here. He loves it. I think he would. How was it when you went over to visit? <laughs> because apparently you know his address, you uh, little stalker. I'll tell you this. <laughs> the crab was phenomenal. Um, the hospitality was even better, though. Love it. It's a wonderful, wonderful guy. How's your Spanish? I see, I see. Un poquito? Yeah, I see. De escuela. Okay, I like it. Hey, everyone, don't forget, tonight we talked to you about that North Texas MLS Next Pro match. If you can't get enough of the soccer today, that match will be streamed live on MLSNextPro.com. North Texas will take on Minnesota United to 8.30 Eastern time. Again, MLSNextPro.com. And uh, I don't know why they hired my brother to call the game, but I, I guess they did. So. Well, Justin, there you go. So... I'll ask you, you got a chance to call some MLS Next Pro games. Who's impressed you so far this season? You know, uh, the top player in the league, I would have to say, is Jason Russell Rowe. It doesn't matter that he played at Maryland. He just did. And uh, But he got called up to the first team for Columbus and played in their match over the weekend. Jack Lynn for Orlando City has been incredibly impressive. But, you know, the one comment that I've gotten from every single coach that has played against New England is that their goalkeeper, Jack Johnson, is... Uh, unequivocally the best keeper in the league. I, I think he had five clean sheets in his first seven starts. I love that. Put so, the goalkeepers on the map too. It's been a it's been a lot of of fun. And last night, St. Louis obviously uh, playing with the next pro team prior to the first team starting next year actually got a win and moved into first place in the Western Conference, which is really tight at the moment. Columbus is has built a pretty significant lead atop the east but we just passed the midway point in the regular season last week and uh it's going to be fun going down to the finish to see who has success in the pro in the postseason now what is a good note and i'm glad you brought that up is that a lot of the younger players on a lot of those nls next pro sides have been sent back here as this shot whistles over the bar have been sent here for mls next cup and that is uh, provided for some very interesting results at the next pro level over the last week. You talked about St. Louis City uh, ahead of their assertion into Major League Soccer next season. John Hackworth has done a phenomenal job. Yeah, Coach sort of Hack. Founding the, sort of establishing the foundation of what that team is going to be about in their identity as a team. And that will evolve as they start to sign more and more players, the goalkeeper. We got more goalkeeper talk for you, Rodney. Uh, former uh, Borussia Dortmund goalkeeper is getting some big names already and starting to slowly assemble their roster. But having the next pro side is such an advantageous thing for St. Louis City SC ahead of their jump into Major League Soccer because some of, some of those players are playing for next year in mind to make the jump with the club to MLS. No doubt about it. And uh, John Hackworth, I have to say, one of the most engaging guys that I've talked to. Now, one thing he said to me a couple weeks ago, uh, he was talking hockey. And he said the winner of the Blues Avalanche Series is going to win the Stanley Cup. Now, he might be right, but as long as he was really only talking about the Avalanche, I thought that was a bit of a bold prediction for the Blues. So how, was it, how, how does... 
how was he relating that to, to the game of soccer? He wasn't. He, he, okay. It was in St. Louis. The Blues are in St. Louis. Got it, got it, got it. See, you, I mean, lost, I, you lost me when you said hockey. Well, I, I can you. tell because every time I've asked you about your favorite city, you've talked about a goal you've scored, not about the city. So, well, you're asking me about cities that I went to, like I went to like, like on vacation, bro. I went for business. What do you mean? Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you know what? A lot of times that, that one track sort of mindset, not that you were, but that, that's what it takes to be a professional, right? You have to be completely dedicated to what you're doing. I agree not with that. You were. No, I agree. Obviously, you have to have a balance of, of, of enjoying your, your life and, and, uh, yes, you get to travel, you get to, to explore new cities and, and it's a beautiful lifestyle, but in order to maintain that beautiful lifestyle, you have to perform. And it's really about what you're doing on the field, what you're doing off the field to take care of yourself, to allow those good times to, as they say, to let those good times roll. But you have to do do the work in order for, for you to get to that level and to maintain a high level once you're there. So we are in the 18th minute, 1-0 lead for Dallas. The goal in the fourth minute for Dallas's. Knight Pickering, his 10th of the season between the U-17 and U-19 levels. And Dallas has held on to that advantage since. However, uh, I think it's fair to say that Barca has been sort of on the front foot since. Barca has, has as we talked about, Barcelona with, uh, with the possession with purpose. They know that they want to go put themselves in a good position to score goals. So their possession, it's not just for the pretty soccer tiki-taka. They're keeping the ball in a deceiving way to make sure that they are uh, able to to get ahead and, and to create chances. And I love the fact that, yes, uh, there are uh, scouts here, there are people watching, um, there are a lot of eyes on these young players, not only um, with us having the games on, on Twitch and on YouTube and and for these players to, to really be... Uh, in a pedal stool, but also the people that are here live and they're watching and they're paying attention, that also plays a big role because now you can start to, to hear these players, to, to get their tendencies, to see how they react to different factors, whether it's the heat, whether it's the competition. Um, and I love to see how close these players really are to the to the first team. Like, how can they get from here to starting at 7.30 at night at Toyota Toyota Stadium? That's that's what I like to see. How close are they really to, to cracking the first team? Remember, the winner of this match will take on the winner of Bethesda SC and Empire United in the U19 round of 16. I think one of the, the most impressive things all week has to be and this is not surprising because this is a tournament that you know you want to win and, and put out your best performance but the sheer desire and will and effort that we have seen from minute one to minute 90 from every team has been absolutely incredible is barca getting a bit dangerous inside the box here a shot away they score and barca levels in the 20th big time play right there big time play that's exactly what Barcelona needed at the time to get a goal, especially right now with Dallas being the home team in the front foot. Right there, the player just shows his composure in order to, to put the ball in the front post. Not necessarily it needs to be the strongest shot, but it needs to be precise. And right there, Jamison, Bryce Jamison right there with that small touch, creating a little bit of space and putting it through um, three different players into the goalkeeper's near post. It's a very difficult shot to to make and it's uh it was done on purpose right there in between the players legs it's almost automatic that that ball will get to to its destination great play great team goal great individual effort we got a game in our hands one one let's go 11th goal of the season for Bryce Jamison who is another one who played U17 and U19 in the regular season and we're level at one and as you said game on Two. I see you on Twitch. That one kid named Noah. Where's, this is Barcelona, though. This is not Real Madrid, my guy. Or my, uh, my friend. Um, another thing, though, um, on Twitch, they were saying that we don't know ball. And I can understand your comment about that just because of the fact that I said Danny Alves. But, yes, you are correct. There are a bunch of players, Cruyff and, and Messi. But... In order for these players, these big-time players that you watch scoring 
30 goals, 40 goals a season. In order for those for those players to be successful, they have to have a supporting cast of, of champions. And when you know how to win titles and you know how to win games and you know how to facilitate your best players, those are the guys that go and notice. And then for me personally, those are the those are the ones that need to be put on a pedestal as well. Players that have gone through to do World Cups, to winning World Cups, to going into to Barcelona and winning uh, championship after championship and trophy, that that doesn't go unnoticed in my eyes. So that was my personal opinion. But I can understand if you are a fan and attracted to to what you are used to seeing, whether it's the goal, the flashiness, uh, all of that, and it goes hand in hand. So you can't really. Uh, no, and it's all good. Everybody all has opinion. their own opinion, and I'm just giving you an inside look on what it really is to to be a. To be a, a top player, it's not just about what you do um, individually, but what you do for the team. Messi was, could not have been that successful without Danny Alves, just because it was, they, their connection was uh, unmatchable on the right side. And it also speaks to the chemistry of the players, their friendship. Uh, uh, are they comfortable speaking uh, Spanish with each other? Danny Alves being from Brazil, but also having to to speak Spanish. Messi being from Argentina. All of these things are, are are small details that take a that take a big toll, and they're a big responsibility. So that's my reason of why I would put a player like Danny Alves up there. So here's something about. You know how just one goal completely changes the way you think about a match, right? right? Dallas got that goal in the fourth minute, and right before Barca scored, I said to you, you know, Barca's pretty much had all the possession since, but Dallas is still winning. Well, now Barca gets a goal, and it feels like the climb has almost become uphill for Dallas because they have certainly struggled to keep the ball since I don't know, the fourth or fifth minute. Yeah, <clears throat> and now we have a game in our hands, right? It's an even game, and now it's. Now we get to see players step up in, in these big situations. Uh, we can tell the players that might shrink from from uh, from the magnitude of this game, but I like to see uh, players like Picker and get get more chances, put the team uh, on his back, and continuing to make those hard runs that complicate the the Barcelona defense. 24 minutes gone by here in the U19 round of 32. 1-1 between the Barca Residency Academy and FC Dallas. Alongside Jamie Watson and Rodney Wallace and our entire outstanding crew, I'm Justin Galanti. Thrilled to be with you from the Toyota Soccer Center what a in legend. Frisco, Texas. Just to, sorry to cut you off, but I, I'm being embraced here by a legend. I like Oscar Therians in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Any questions you have directed to, to a player like Aleko that I grew up watching, what a guy. Hey, what a guy. Thank you, Aleko. Thank you for everything. <laughs> he had one of the best one of the best celebrations what? in Major League Soccer history yeah. when he was playing for DC United. Aleko is a legend, and bro. Played against New York Red Bulls, took a full swig of Red Bull after he scored a goal. That's right. That's it right. Out. It was an expensive swig. Aleko, how expensive was that swig when you uh, spit out the Red Bull? He said he couldn't afford it. The fans had to get together and get a GoFundMe to pay for it. That's how expensive Red, that Red fund was. Red Bull sent him a 24-pack to his home. <laughs> Barca looking dangerous inside the box once again. Asking for a hand, but no whistle. And Dallas able to get this out of trouble. If you had to say over the first two days here, if you could, you know, center on one thing that's been the favorite part of your experience down here so far, what would it be? It's just the fact that we are, uh, we're witnessing these, these, these young kids be great and compete and, and their hunger and their desire to get to the next level. Um, competition to me is everything and, and, and being able to see, um, the growth, game in, game out, that we've personally seen for, uh, throughout the different age groups. Like right now, being able to watch this game, this is to me the closest that I've seen to to, to the professional level, and uh, that speaks about a lot about the the level of uh, of where these players are right now. But this it's exciting. It's exciting to see young talent, and I'm excited to see where where games like this and and, and exposure like this may take them in their career. Hey Jamie, I want to throw one at you. What are, uh, this is that one kid named Noah on Twitch. What are ways to get noticed or chosen by an MLS Academy? Fantastic question. Is there is a half hard to shot for a penalty for FC Dallas. 
I think one of the ways in this tournament you have to be very, very cautious. There are a lot of scouts here, and I think every player is well aware of that. But you need to make sure to stay within the framework of the team, and it's so important to make sure you don't try to do too much. You don't try to play outside of your game or try to do things differently because coaches are so astute at recognizing that this player is doing too much and it's deviating from the game plan. So I think going out and being the best version of yourself within the framework of the team makes you stand out even more because coaches nowadays will understand if a player is being asked a different role and they can hear the communication from the coaches on the sideline. If you're being asked to sit in as a defensive midfielder, but you want to go show off how good you are at dribbling forward, well, now you're deviating from the team game plan, and that's hurting the team. So making sure to be a, a key component of what the team is trying to accomplish is how you stand out. And then with that, just try to make sure that you do what you're best at, highlight those skills, good effort from distance. That goes just wide. That's a effort that was asking a lot of questions from Joey Velasquez. I think those are little things that you can do to improve your stock in a coach's eyes that may be watching or a scout's eyes that watch because nowadays the level of these coaches that are watching it are so high you can play yourself out of favor if you start to do too much hey and here's the other thing right i mean this is an amazing amazing opportunity to be seen but with how much there is on social media and and whatever else right this is not your only chance to be seen so you don't have to go into these matches and, and feel like i need to score today or, or i'm not going to get seen right well, I mean, if so, you see a player like uh, a, a person like Jamie Watson who who makes profiles online. I mean, players players these days they have the opportunity to really showcase themselves online. So you know, it is actually important to be able to have uh, channels like this to to put these players on the map and put them on a pedestal. But um, Jamie. Please stop trying to log on with different accounts, bro. This is getting out of control. You're being toxic again. Did I get another compliment in the chat? Is that what you're trying to <laughs> allude to? <laughs> oh, we appreciate the chat. This is making it a lot of fun. This is a very good game right now. It is. It's quality. I like that. You're right. Test the chat. Who, who's had the better of the last five minutes of play? If you've been watching for the last five minutes, let us know who you think has been the better of the two teams, and then Rodney, we'll give it another minute hey, or two, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Jamie, um, a question here from um, our Twitch family is, uh, what is the best academy? Um, and not just because, not just from what we're watching right now, but overall, what do you, who do you think is the best uh, academy? Well, so best is subjective, right? So exactly, yes. Best? Okay, so what is it, uh, what Who's do you see? Yes, Good okay. Forward. There's an opportunity for Ooh. Barca. Shot big time, saved by Salinas. It was right through the defense for Samuel Mendoza. And Selena stands tall in the 30th minute. Love that cut from Mendoza. Again, the defender going and then cut back. But it's just fantastic positioning from Salinas to make the save. Uh, look, Rodney, we'll have this discussion, right? We could have it. We could we could go 10 different ways, right? Who produces the most homegrown oh. players? Then you're talking about SC Dallas and Philadelphia Union Academy. Yep. Uh, who's the best at different age groups, right? Because you get certain generations, if you will, age groups that come through and a U19 program can be the star studded one of a program, but then it could be the 13s of the next group that's the best one. So, uh, Rodney, you, you got to see some of the games yesterday, some of the games today, Justin, you as well. But, Rodney, I'll ask you, of the two games that you had yesterday and now the second of two today, as we get to the hydration break, which team has impressed you the most from the U17 and the U19? Right now, I am highly impressed to be, to be completely honest with you. I'm impressed with, uh, I'm impressed with Dallas. Um, because of the way that they're playing, but I'm also very, uh, very intrigued by, by the team, by the players, uh, and, and how they communicate with each other and the leadership that is, is being shown by, by players like Pickering and making sure that he has the, the rest of his teammates ticking and, and he needs a supporting cast, so he needs to make sure that he's at his best, but he needs to make sure that the players around him are also comfortable and, and, and still fighting for each other in order to, to climb this uphill battle that they have in front of them. Right now, 94 degrees here in Frisco, so we go to the hydration break. And we are going to throw quickly to our Adidas sounds of the game. Hey, Manny, help. Manny, Slade, you got a bump. Just hold it. Mikey, that's you! Hello, Mikey. Slade, 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 Will, Will! Will, hey, get him out of the wall. Diego, Diego, hey, once they drop in, let's keep it. Hey, 
Diego, coaching, good. Hey, it's 3v2 now. It's 3v2, Manny. Manny. Well done, Ty. Well done, buddy. Well done, Ty. Hey. Hey. Go. Same as one. Get your prevention right, Bowen. Our sounds of the game brought to you by Adidas. Right now it is 1-1 between Dallas and the Barca Residency Academy. Goal in the fourth minute for Dallas, 20th minute for Barca. And as we chug on here in the first half, this has been an awesome match so far. Round of 32 and the U19 playoffs. Alongside Rodney, uh, sorry, I promised Jamie I'd say him first. Alongside <laughs> Jamie Watson, who played in a U-17 World Cup, and as Jamie put it, so I'm going to quote him, at Rodney Wallace, who played in a real World Cup. I'm Justin Galanti, our outstanding crew, <laughs> putting on this amazing production for all of you all week. And, uh, well... We have a sauce meter. We should have a fun meter. Jamie, uh, Jamie, right Ju now. Justin's putting on a show right now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm blessed just to be in this man's presence right now. The way that he's leading the truth right now, impressive. Uh, but Justin, you know why though? Justin That's what happens when you go to Maryland. That's what happens. You just develop skills in real life. I, and, and keeping about the uh, the stars that are on the field right now, uh, as opposed to the ones that are commentating on the match today. Just got a chance to chat with the FC Dallas head coach, and Coach Gall was saying that he wanted his team to do a better job of keeping the ball in the middle of the park. After they got their goal, he felt as though they were still trying to take too many chances getting in behind, and ultimately they concede, and Barca is able to equalize. He just wants to see a little bit more as it close out the first half of keeping possession in the midfield, and that will help dictate the pace of play. Thank you, Jamie. Barca continuing to hold a good bit of possession here. Joey Buckley drops it back. And this is Kevin Meza. It's always so important to be strong going into and out of halves, right? How many matches have you seen flip on a dime because of a late goal? Anything can happen at any given moment. So that's why as a, as a player, um, you have to be alert at every single level, regardless of where you're playing, regardless of, uh, of who you're playing against. Being aware and being um, mindful that there is always, uh, there's always danger and how to spot it before it even happens. That shows the maturity of of the player that shows the maturity of the club as well but the moments like this right now you see Barcelona on the ball you see them being patient and being able to exploit the, the spaces is uh is so key in, in 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 managing the games managing the minutes Jamie you're also right because uh, the, the heat is a factor the weather is a factor and you have to be able to to know when to to turn it on to run hard to run smart and you have to know when to keep possession and, and, and slow the tempo down. Looks like Jamie just had a chance to have a conversation on the Barca sideline. Jamie, what'd you get? Yeah, I just got a chance to chat with head coach for Barca Residency Academy, and he was really pleased with his team's response after going down quickly and getting the result, uh, getting the equalizer, excuse me, to level the result now. But he was also really pleased with the spacing of the group, the possession of the plan. Spoke really highly about FC Dallas and that they try to do it similarly. But now he thinks whichever team is going to be the most effective in possession is going to be the one that's going to be able to continue to dictate how this game goes, how the rest of the first half plays out. Barca has had a really good response. He is pleased with that. Thanks so much, Jamie. As we are in the 36th minute, Salinas getting a bit of a talking to from our referee. Don't forget, chime in with your questions on Twitch, either for Jamie or Rodney or, uh, you know, what if you're Justin. somebody watching who's... It's Justin. Talk, oh, wait, talk, talk to Justin. You guys are... Justin's not giving himself enough credit. Justin is... Uh, Man, a man with facts, with knowledge, with experience. You know, I was going to say, if you're a young, uh, aspiring person to work in television, any questions for the guys in the truck? Honestly, if Justin, you have offered a great deal of insight. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I'm looking forward to spending the next, uh, what is it, nine days with you? You know, you're... You're the first person who's ever looked forward to spending nine days with me, so I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just being honest right now. This is only day two, so don't push it, bro. Throw here for Barca in the 37. 
I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen anything, you know, overly dangerous since the goal for Jameson in the 20th minute. Let's see if something can change. Ball comes just outside the box on a good run once again by Mendoza. Mendoza trying to work his way through a couple of defenders. Good physical battle for the ball. And it will end up with Dallas. That's good defending right there, putting out fires, making making sure the situation really amounts to nothing. That's a sign of a true defender right there, putting yourself in between the, the man and the ball and making sure you're the, the, the last person to come out with the, with the possession. I love the fact that, that, that he doesn't need to dive in. He doesn't need to, to make a, a strong tackle. He just needs to really position himself in the best place. And that's a sign of a true defender. It's Zidane. Good to see you. Good to have you again on our Twitch. I know that you were on yesterday, so it is uh, it is a pleasure to have you back. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody else that's been uh, that's been tagging along with us. It's been uh, it's been very special, and it's been very helpful to to have you on, on Twitch and, and be able to to comment and to share your opinions and ask your questions. So don't hesitate to 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 tag along with us to to join us in this uh, in this beautiful game. Rodney, prior to the match, you know, we gave our Adidas keys to the game, and yours for Barca was possession with a purpose. They've certainly have had had plenty of possession. How do you think they've accomplished what you talked about? Well, I, I mean, look at where Barcelona is right now, how, how high they're pressing, and, and what they're looking to do. Barcelona right now is looking to get the ball as soon as possible so that they can cut the distance of where they have to, when they have to attack. And what I mean by that is that the sooner that you get the ball, the faster that you can go and attack and, and the more preser you're, you're preserving energy right there so you're working hard to win the ball right away and making sure that you have enough energy and, and you're close enough to to attack once the field becomes bigger it is harder for for you to catch the other team by surprise so just two different level two uh different elements of attack and I, i'm seeing a lot of questions of uh this is the first uh, comments about this is be, this being the, the first time that they see a, a number ten um, Moses uh, Mandragon playing uh, playing as a center back. So a lot of people have uh, have questions about that. And uh, one of my personal uh, answers is, and I, I I'm not going to say why why the number, but in the position. But I know that number tens are using big tackle right there. That's a that's a card right there. There's no need for. There was no need for that. Yeah, that's the tackle that Jamie would make out of uh, out of desperation, right there for sure. Bowen McLeod issued the yellow here in the 40th minute. Take another look at it. <sighs> One tackle right there. Two tackles right there. Lucas Sawinski. And I do like that though. I'm not gonna lie to you. That is uh, that was part of my game. Um, being a uh, uh, Adding that, uh, that that level of spice, maybe maybe adding some contact, sending a message, not trying to hurt the player, but making sure that they were able to to know I was there to feel me, and then to have your teammate also be on that same level, it uh it goes a long way. I'm not saying play dirty or anything like that, but you can be intense, you can set the tempo, and you can uh, dictate the 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 way that this game is going to go. Dallas is doing everything possible to to get ahead. Barcelona is doing a great. Great job at keeping the ball. Dallas is making sure that they're able to, to disrupt as well. Joey Velasquez, the player down here for Barcelona. We uh, have sizzling bacon, one, two, three, four, checking in. Eating boneless wings and watching this. Couldn't beat this Sunday. We appreciate that. What also, a life you live, sizzling bacon. Congratulations. You deserve it right now, as a matter of fact. Eating wings, watching, just watching young talent, doesn't get better than that. Jamie, simple one for you. Bone in or bone less? In, in 100% of the time. Do you even consider boneless wings wings, or are those just nuggets? Yeah, clearly. Uh, do you go with the uh, Do you go with the flat wings, or do you go with the uh, with the drumstick? Look, I'm not a professional athlete anymore. I go both. Wow, all, wow. all of them. Honesty for the win. <laughs> hey, Rodney, I want to ask you a question about your point you just made about uh, for maybe some of the young players that are watching here. Why and what benefit does putting in a, a tackle? And where about in the field does it need to happen to send a message uh, that doesn't, yeah. you know, hurt your team essentially while you're doing it? Why would a player want to do that? Yes, no, that's a great question. Um, that's why I asked it. 
do you want me to answer or not? Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think that no, you're spot on. I think making a tackle in the offensive uh, half of your of your field uh, in in a place where you're not really putting your team in a in a dangerous position, whether it's uh it's close to your own box or whatnot. But making a tackle early as a forward, especially or as a midfielder, making a tackle up the field where you don't put your team in a terrible position. I don't mind it if you're doing it for a purpose, if you're doing it to, to win a ball, if you're doing it just to slow the game down. So making sure that you get close, make contact, that's important. But ultimately what you want to do is, is, is play the ball, um, minimize the mistakes. There's a takeaway for Barca, chip in on net, easy for Salinas. Jamie, was that part of your game? Being able to, you know, how important is that for, for a striker, for an attacking player to be able to to add that physic, uh, physicality to your to your game, and why would you foul early uh, up on the field instead of uh, um, in your defensive third? Well, you made a great point when you said about the the positioning of it and where it needs to be. Because if if you make a silly challenge in and around 25, 30 yards into your own half, you commit the foul, but then the next ball is going into your box off the set piece or potentially on goal. So you've got to make sure to be calculated when and where you do it, how you do it in the manner. So you're not hopefully not taking an early yellow because that changes the way that you play if you're going to do it. But I think the reason you do it, I think it echoes sort of what you said in the sense that it now makes a player think twice if it's somebody that's going to have their back to goal and you put a challenge in hard from behind. Now every time that they go to receive the ball with their back to goal, they're, they're wondering, is that defender there that kicked me? Is he going to do it again? Is it going to be yeah. harder this time? And it's just that little bit of seed of doubt, right? You just got to be smart about how you go about it. And that's sort of a benefit of just maybe changing the way your opponent plays when you do it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Jamie, um, another question. Um, who was uh, the toughest defender that you went up against or a memorable uh uh, defender or a moment that you that you really remember in your career challenging from a, from a center back or a right back or a left back oh, very good effort wonderful ball played in over the top and a good effort from Andrew Martinez he, the wish is though he would have been able to stay over get that body shape and stay over it with the left foot drive through it he leaned it back a little bit and he's catching it on the up bounce so it goes up and over uh, the question about toughest defender in my rookie year I had the privilege of playing with Eddie Pope he was a starting center back for Real Salt Lake, and I was a, a young forward that played on the second team to start the season off. And uh, I remember I made the mistake of calling for a foul in an 11v11 game. And so I grabbed the ball, called a foul, and everybody kind of stopped, and, okay, they gave the foul. Uh, and then about 60 seconds later, nobody was looking. I was running across the field. Eddie Pope lowered a shoulder into me, knocked me sideways, literally horizontal. And uh, he stood over me and asked me and dared me to call a foul. Did and you call the foul? I remember saying, no, man, it looked clean to me. <laughs> <laughs> Told all three of the Eddie folks that I was seeing that it was a clean challenge. <laughs> it was by far the hardest. Never defender. again. Never again. Never again. Did you ever call for a foul? Get, try to get a call in a train. An 18 year old. Good for uh, you, though. That's confidence, though. You know what I mean? That was confidence. And, that's, and was that, was also, due, that was due to where you were playing uh, as a youth, right? You, you were at a World Cup, and you'd seen uh, different things that maybe other players hadn't seen in, in an international game where you're not as naive, and, and there's more uh, there's more of that contact. And uh, it's good that you had that recognition, though, bro. I like the confidence from you. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was it was knocked out of me for a little while after that, I'll be honest. And that was, that was a good wake-up call for a young pro. To have that happen. Uh, what about you, Rodney? As this is a turnover, Pickering's in if he can play ball down line. Opportunity here Great for ball. Dallas. It's Pickering had no one with him though. Uh, should he have gone with his right foot to try to play that across instead of the outside of the left, Rodney? I I actually would would have loved to see that. Um, that is something that you should have in your locker at this stage. But at the same time, it's something that this player Pickering can watch on tape, and now the coach can tell him, look. This is an easier ball for you to make that would be more successful if you were just to strike it with your with your right foot instead of going across with it um, with your left. It's just more accuracy and you're precise. You're not wasting the, the moment. You're not wasting the opportunity. And you might be able to be rewarded by getting the ball back and, and putting your team ahead. See the four minutes of added time here in the first half. From the Toyota Soccer Center in Frisco, Texas, Justin Galanti, Rodney Wallace, Jamie Watson, and our entire crew, thrilled to be with you in the red-hot Texas summer. Spectacular view of 
Toyota Stadium just down the way. That'll be the host of the championship matches next weekend for all four age levels, U15, 16, 17, and 19. Free kick here for Barca towards the end of the first half. See if they can make something happen. The two goals, Pickering in the fourth for Dallas. Jameson in the 20th for Barcelona. Miles Lyons tried to send one towards the back post, but... And I love this commentary on Twitch. It says that this is sad that the commentary wants his, wants our players to making tackles and set the tone um, instead of maybe uh, talking about the, the technical level and keeping the ball. And I completely agree I agree with you, Matthew. Here's a cross out in front, a one touch. Very and a beautiful separate. chance for Abel Salazar. But we're talking, we're, we're giving you insight into other aspects of the game. And uh, when we mean being physical and setting the tone, we're not talking about playing dirty. We're talking about doing the little things that will allow you to be successful in, in the long run from things that Jamie and myself have seen in the professional game. Um, we're not encouraging players to play dirty. We're encouraging players to to be smart and knowing when to when to maybe lower the, the intensity by by maybe creating a, a, an easy foul to to stop the the game a little bit. Especially when you're playing in 90 98 degree weather, maybe you want to slow the game down a little bit. And I'll and I'll challenge uh, the thought process behind that that statement and say, what if you're playing against somebody who is technically superior? as a special player right there are going to be players that are right. better so at times you've got to figure out a way to manage that within a game and sometimes you manage that with physicality at times when you're on the ball of course you want to try to let right, your right. technique show your ability show but it's it's naive to think that physicality doesn't have a place in the game it's being calculated it's being smart facts but it's a good question. It's a good thought. It's a good comment, Matthew. Yeah, no, yeah, I, keep it coming. I, I, I like discussion. it. Keep it coming. And we have talked about the, the the aspect of keeping the ball. We've talked about possession, and we've talked about possession with purpose, not just for for the sake of keeping the ball. It is important at this uh, stage of their career to to have the technical abilities, which I, I I'm pretty sure that we've all seen the, that they're capable of doing. But there there are also other things in this game that will go a long way for 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 the growth of these players individually and and uh, them as a team. Closing in on those four minutes of added time. Here in the first half, Mendoza has been very good. This is Darian Castillo and Mendoza. The dispossession on the back line for FC Dallas and moving ahead with it once again is Tariq Scott. And now we get the whistle, and we go to halftime, which did not thrill uh, to Tariq Scott, but that ends what was a very entertaining first half here in Frisco. Tariq it was Pickering fourth. in the fourth minute for Dallas, and then the response in the 20th from Jamison, and it's 1-1 as we go to the break. We will be right back here from the MLS Next Cup.
A 3-0 win for Seattle over Solar Soccer Club, and a big part of the victory was a brace from this man, Michael Luande. Michael Luande here getting the ball, making sure that he stays with the play, looks for looks for the strength and looks to, to go for the ball instead of choosing so much to, to, to get caught up in the physicality of it. He stayed focused on the task, and that was to put the ball in the back of the net. We had a very short time in this match where it was 11 on 11. In the 19th minute, a red card issued to the goalkeeper for Seattle, Wyatt Nelson. Wyatt Nelson making making the decision to come out um, out of his box and, and almost uh, fish a ball that was very difficult for him to get. Did the best he could. Maybe um, it wasn't the right decision, but um, the referee made the call, gave him the red card, puts his team in a, in a spot, in a hard spot. So Levi Beaver came on, and he stood on his head the rest of the way. Levi Beaver was, was ready for the for the challenge. He was ready for the task. It's very important to see a young goalkeeper come into to a game like this uh, off the bench unexpectedly and, and be able to make great saves to keep your team alive. So Seattle continued to dominate despite being down to 10, and it was Luande again in the second half. Luande again showing how, how fearless he is, and, and and this for me is is a big goal. Might not be the prettiest goal, but for him to be able to put his whole body on the line to do whatever and do whatever it takes to put the ball in the back of the net in order for his team to to get the result, that that's a big time play for me. And then one more for Seattle is Etienne Veillard. Etienne Veillard just, just showing his composure, staying wide, not shooting the ball right away, making sure that he creates the right space but right there being able to get the goalkeeper off his back and just put him in the back of the net is is this is what i like to see from these young players right here the celebrations embracing the the, the environment and being able to so to get results so seattle gets the win and moves to the round of 16 in u17 
second half is coming up here between FC Dallas and the Barca Residency Academy. Justin Galanti and Rodney Wallace, so glad to be with you. Pleasure's mine. Is it? Pleasure's mine. <laughs> well, it was certainly a pleasure to uh, watch that first half. A goal on each side and a really competitive first 45 minutes, wouldn't you say? And I and I agree with that. Competitive is the is the key word. Very competitive, very professional performance for, from both teams. Let's take a look at the halftime highlights brought to you, as always, by Adidas. And uh, it didn't take long for Dallas to get on the board, courtesy of Knight Pickering. Beautiful run by Pickering right here, just showing the, the capability that he has to switch up his game. And right here, the composure to cut back and get a left foot strike, getting a bit lucky with the, with the deflection. But the play itself, that's what matters right now at this point of, of his career. And to be able to put his team on top right now, that was a, that was a huge point for, for Dallas to make. Didn't take too long though for Barca to get the answer from Bryce Jamison. Bryce Jamison putting himself in the in the right place at the right time, creating a little bit of space, shooting it near post, and making sure that that ball is almost impossible for the goalkeeper to get in between two of the Dallas defenders. Let's uh, throw it down to the sideline and Jamie Watson, who is hanging out with some of the Dallas personnel. Here with head coach John Gall. Coach, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, we need more of the ball. Uh, a little bit forceful with the ball. Uh, obviously, we got the goal early. We kind of knew the other team was going to be pressing us, so we knew the space was in behind. But I think that once we got the goal, uh, they knew that we were trying to play in behind, so we need to manage the ball a little bit more. That's what we've talked about at the water break and talked about at halftime. In the second half, we'll, you'll see us with the ball a little bit more. You seem really upbeat, energetic. How does this team go and get the win and advance on? Yeah, I think more of the ball. We've been a team this year that's been really positive with the football, managing the game and, and creating chances from, from good opportunities. So I think the important thing for us is getting back to our ways. And obviously it's hot today and the boys are excited. They want to get four. They want to score goals. But we need to be a little bit more intelligent with the ball and manage the game. Fantastic. Awesome. Good luck. Thank you very much for your time. So that is Jamie Watson with John Gall, the head coach for FC Dallas. He saw his side score very quickly in the first half. But then Barca kind of put its foot on the gas pedal and held possession most of the rest of the first 45. So we heard the words from the mouth of the head coach. Now we want to hear them from you. How does FC Dallas adjust back to what Barcelona did in the first half? Well, now it, it's time for FC Dallas to, to turn it up a notch. Um, this is a this is a winner go home scenario. This is a, a very high caliber uh, match. So right now the players have to really. Uh, Decide what they want to do. Do they want to go home? Do they want to win? Do they want to continue to to show show up for themselves and, and be able to showcase their talent, or or is this it for them? Do they do they are they satisfied with what they put on? So right now it's really determining what is it that these players really want to do. Barca in the regular season was 14-1 and seven. Came out of the Southwest Division. Dallas out of the Frontier Division. Went seven, four, and three in regular season play. As we get set to start the second half here at the Toyota Soccer Center. Temperature obviously rising as the morning has turned to the afternoon. 94 degrees at the moment. Real feel is into triple digits. 100 degrees. A warm Texas Sunday afternoon. Justin Galancy, Rodney Wallace, Jamie Watson, our entire tremendous crew. So glad that you are with us yesterday, today, the rest of the week through next weekend when we crown four MLS Next Cup champions, 15U through 19U, and uh, we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Yeah, no, we're definitely um, we're definitely having a good time over here, right? Uh, Jamie, how you doing over there? Well, you mentioned the real field down here is uh, over 100, and I can tell you it's tough, man. And so I'm, I'm interested to see the pace of play in the second half. Can these players maintain the high press? And also, possession is going to be at a premium. I know that it was one of your keys to the match, Rodney. It will be interesting to see how it unfolds because right now, sometimes being patient and letting the ball do the work going side to side is going to cause your opponent to make two, three, four runs back and forth. And then ultimately, in this heat, Somebody somewhere along the way is going to cheat. They're not going to go all the way. That's when a passing lane opens up, and that's when you try to play the penetrating pass. I love that. And, and what do you mean by somebody is going to cheat? What do you mean by by that in, in, in soccer terms? So maybe uh, people on our on our. Here's a ball ahead for Barca. This is Mendoza moving in, shooting. What a save! Salinas keeps it level. 
was a very, 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 very crucial chance right there. I would have loved to see. I would have seen. I would have loved to see that ball uh, on the far post. But the player, what the player did well, putting the ball um, on goal, making the run, staying patient. So let's let's stay uh, let's stay focused on the positives, but also recognize their talent and their ability. So for the next time, just just knowing that this player is capable of putting that ball in the back of the net. But Rodney, Jamie, why do you go? Why do you go to the back post there? What's the two benefits? Exactly. From it? So. Um, thank you for that. So, Jamie, back, p playing the ball back post, striking it back post away from where the goalkeeper is, this is going to give you a, 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 an advantage, a better chance of, of having that ball go in the back of the net, maybe hitting the post, maybe getting the goalkeeper to get a deflection and for somebody else to, to get a goal. So you always get a get a, you get a better chance of, of, of success putting the ball in the far post. And that's, uh, that's something that you learn uh, early on. You know, just going back to the temperature really quickly, obviously it is uh, very hot, and you and I, Rodney, are sitting in a shade at 10, whereas the players are out in the sun, but you see the temperature up there. Remember yesterday, we were walking out, and we walked next to one of the turf fields, mm. and we could literally feel the heat coming off the turf. It must have felt, I don't know, 10 degrees warmer when we walked by. It was... Uh it should not have been allowed for anybody to walk on that turf yesterday. Now, we do have two teams that are used to it here, right? Barca Residency Academy in Arizona and Dallas in, you guessed it, Dallas. Uh, but I think you're required Oops, to I love stay. that. Love that right there. Beautiful move here. Barca recovers. I think you're required to say, if you're talking about the temperature in Arizona, that it's a dry heat. Nobody knows what that means, but it's a dry heat. I guess you'd have to be here to... I guess you have to be here. Pickering does well to win a corner for Dallas here in the 49th minute. And thank you all for joining us on Twitch. Thank you for, for your comments. Uh, thank you for, for just being here and, and your willingness to, to learn and to, to tag along and to um, voice your opinion. So keep it coming. We're here for that. We have... Uh, we have Justin, we have Jamie, we have uh, uh, myself. So any other, any questions that you guys have at home or wherever you're watching, please don't hesitate. Corner here for Dallas. And I, and I guess on uh, I'm talking about uh, speaking to my Twitch people. I think it is sometimes if you are new to this and seeing Barcelona out of Arizona, it might be uh, a bit confusing knowing that Barcelona is uh, based in... Uh, in Spain, play they play in the Liga, so to see them in the states um, affiliated with uh, Arizona, it's uh, it could be a bit confusing. But this is a, a residency program based in Arizona, and these uh, these young talent they 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 play there, they live there, they breathe, they eat the game of football. So it is uh, it is good to see them um, literally embodying what it means to to play for Barcelona, but now doing it in the states. Something that we didn't have growing up, Jamie. No, you're right, and so it's a big opportunity for these players, uh, and this is the showcase for it, right? This is the culmination of a year-long competition to be able to win your place through, through various different mechanisms. So now the pressure's on. You're going to find out 1-1, one, one, set-piece opportunities like these are huge. Defensively, you've got to be tight. This is a very high line at the top of the 18. It gives lots of room for the ball to be played in behind. Seems like Dallas has done a better job here in the early moments of the second half. Maintaining possession as this one comes in back post. What a chance on a run in for Diego Hernandez. That ball right there, right across the face of the goalkeeper, is very hard for a goalkeeper and uh, and defenders to to really figure out how to defend right there. And the reason I say that is just because of the the, the positioning of, of the defenders in Barcelona. They have to shift their bodies and make sure that they're seeing the ball, make sure they're seeing the man. And a ball like that right across the face of, of, of the goalkeeper's face is very difficult. So shout out to shout out to the player for really recognizing where the danger was. Let's uh, give some credit where credit is due as well. How about uh, Jamie said, huh, high line, a lot of room for the ball behind it. And Hernandez found himself wide open. Right, and that's exactly how, uh, that's also how Pickering scored that goal right there. Taking advantage of the high line and being able to run in behind, recognizing where the space is, putting the ball in the back of the net. I'm loving this game right now. This is a really good tactical battle right now. And with that high line, it, it's interesting because it, it, it's twofold, right? In the sense that it, it puts a lot of pressure, but you leave yourself susceptible. If you're FC Dallas and you get a chance, if you're Diego Hernandez, 
and you look up and you've got an opportunity to put in Pickering, it's about the timing of maybe playing the ball a little bit quicker and just knowing you've got to clear that defender. You, you cannot leave a ball short with this much room in behind. Right now, when you look at Barca residency, every defender in the back four is on the midfield line. One ball can split it. Mm. And it's a foot race. That's leaving it short. That is, that was the moment in which you cannot leave that short. You've got to get that in behind. And if you do, then you're off to the foot race. And all four defenders are running towards their own goal. And they're in a, in a disadvantage at that point. The attacking player is running full head of steam towards goal. Well, here comes Barca back on attack the other way. A couple players go down to the pitch. No call. Recovered by Philly via Pudwa. Or Barca comes all the way back out to, to midfield. Jamie, I think this is a question more for you because you uh, had the experience. You guys spoke about the Residency Academy, and I'm just wondering any stories you've heard that uh, about really talented players on the pitch but didn't cope well with the environment of being away from home, left the academy, and returned home, or a story you've heard in the past similar to that from Amin NYC? Um, if you want to know the truth, no, I don't. And I'll tell you why in a second as this attack manifests. Because the players that couldn't handle it and ended up not being able to make it in the residence, most of them aren't playing soccer and haven't for a while. It really tests you as a person. And, and you, I don't think you can make it as a professional if you can't handle that type of environment because it's in the professional environment. It's like the residency, but it's times 10. It's, the residency is an introduction. It's a wonderful introduction, but it's very difficult. Being a professional is 10 times harder when you're on your own and there's nobody to motivate you. And you have all the different outside factors that can tempt you and could derail your focus. The residency, it's this bubble that's created. There's a low shot, easily stopped by Salinas. How much did that experience help you when you became a professional? Well, it gave you a little taste of what the professional environment is like. And the players that, that didn't like the taste of it, they went home and they're doing something differently now. They're not, they haven't been involved in soccer in a while. But the players that can thrive in that environment and be able to sometimes do what it takes to survive that entire environment they're the ones that are better for it they're tested early this is a test this type of tournament this type of adversity because you've got players that are going to have to solve problems now and know that the culmination of a year-long build-up to this playoff they're out and they're into the showcase if they lose here today so as this next uh, half hour or so a little bit more starts to unfold you're going to find out a lot about players, which ones rise to the occasion and which ones fold under pressure. Tackle. Beautifully done there by Cesar Elizalde. And a foul against Barca here. I'll go to the flip side as FC Dallas get the opportunity to, uh, to restart as well. Players like Michael Bradley, when he came into the residency program, there were 30 players and he was easily the 30th best player. But that year-long environment transformed him as a player. And he was able to come out at the end of it. Yes. He didn't make the World Cup roster, but he did get drafted by the New York Metro Stars. New York, New Jersey Metro Stars. Played the, every the minute New of Jersey every game. Metro Stars. Sorry to correct you. Continue. <laughs> There's yeah. only one team in New York. <laughs> New York is blue, baby. What about the 3-0 win that Red Bulls had in the Open Cup the other focus, night? We focus, won't have to talk focus, about focus that. Focus on what you were talking about, Jamie. Stay the on track. NYCFC <laughs> man, Rodney Wallace. No, I, Michael Bradley made this revolution of a change over a 12-month period. Saw him going to Major League Soccer, be able to play every minute of every game that season before he made his move over to Heronveen and then uh, carried on to Roma and was able to play in the Premier League. Hey, still doing it now. U.S. Men's National Team, I think he played in the same... Well, you were in the 18 World Cup. He was in the, the 14 World Cup. Yeah, so you look at what that did for him. So What he did for Toronto. Yeah. What he's doing. For, yeah. I mean, he's still doing it. Yeah. And, Jamie, by the way, to, to your credit, um, you said that some of the players that weren't able to adapt to, to that young professional environment, they're no longer, they're not here. They're not here with us. They're not doing this. But it's also a credit to your personal um, mentality and, and your toughness and your willingness to Your, your willingness to, to stay with it and, and, and to focus and look at you now even if you are not playing you're still involved with the game so shout out to you for just staying really really focused on your mission hey, big thanks happy man. for you man I'm thanks, proud man. of you it's good to have you here and, and Slade Starnes is going to go into the book here and who knows maybe there may be some players right now from this residency that's going to stand over this free kick is it going to be Bryce Jameson is it going to be uh, Lucas Winsky standing over this and then maybe 
20 years from now, they're in the broadcast booth and they're getting shout outs being able to survive the residency. Right? Who knows? Full circle. We'll be watching. There it is. There it is. It's a big opportunity in this match. Buckley, the left back for Barca, has had a really good game. Quietly gone about the way he does things. Great body shape when he is able to take his first touch. The body shape is him. important. Why is the body shape such a such a common? We hear the body shape. What does that mean, really mean? With his ability to receive a pass and understand that as the ball comes in, does he need to take it with his left foot, his right foot? Does he need to take it where he touches it by a defender because he's on rushing? Does he need to just control it, set himself up to play with the next touch? Buckley's been really impressive uh, through the first hour of this match. And now the body shape on this set piece, as it sits about 22 yards out invitingly for a right footer. But looking at Salinas though, he's he's cheating over to the side of the wall. That far post is inviting right now. So a big opportunity for Barcelona here in the 57th minute. Can they cash in? And Salinas makes the easy save right into the hands. And an opportunity goes by the wayside for Barcelona as we enter the 58th. Hey, don't forget, we are going to have three more broadcasts tomorrow. All U-17 showcase matches. First at 9 a.m., it'll be Montreal taking on Empire United. Soccer's FC Chicago against LA Surf Soccer Club at 11 a.m. And at 1 p.m., these are all local times. Here in Houston taking on Indiana Fire Academy as the shot goes well over the bar. Give the player credit though, right there, um, and give, give the whole team of, of Dallas the, the credit right there with that play. That 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 started from the back line. The goalkeeper gets the ball. He plays it out wide. They make a big switch diagonal, which is catching the Barcelona defense by surprise and having the the ability to drop your shoulder when you run and get a shot off. The, the shot wasn't quality, but but the play itself shows a lot about what this uh, what this club is looking to do and and implementing the the style of play that they are. Being able to take players when we want. That's all of those things are very important. No goals yet in the second half. It was Knight Pickering for Dallas in the fourth minute. And then Bryce Jamison in the 20th minute for Barcelona to level things. We have sat at 1 1 ever since. And uh, I'll ask you guys both, and, and you know, as detailed or not detailed of an answer as you want to give, pick one thing that's going to make the difference in this match. What do you think it would be? One difference that will make a different difference in this in this match will be um, the desire to win. Yes, that's true, but also your depth. You have to test your depth right here. Who can come off the bench, in a, especially in weather like this, and make a difference for for the team? Sometimes it's not specifically about the players that started the game but who can come in and make an immediate impact um, for the for the team I think it's gonna be the final ball for both teams right now I think it's been lacking whether it's the ball that springs Pickering in behind or Terry Scott on the far side that ball has been lacking it hasn't put them into an advantageous position the one time it does Scott just has the opportunity can't guide on target and Barca Residency Academy has done brilliantly keeping possession but when they get that ball that goes out wide, can there be the right pace? This is a good opportunity. Got to pick out a player from this spot. This is Mendoza trying to make something happen. Mendoza back to his left foot. Out towards the top. Meza waited on it. Barca possessing well here. Can they get a strike on target? They can, but it's easy for Salinas once again. Now Mendoza ends up keeping possession on the, on the end line and, and cutting it back. But when he's in that position one on one, he's got to make a quicker decision because the second and the third and fourth touch, it brings over a second FC Dallas defender. And then the only option is to circle it back around and you get a shot on the less preferred left foot from 20 yards out from a center back. And, and look, who, look, look who's, uh, who's striking the ball for, for Barcelona right there. Number 10, um, Mondragon. And, and for a player, for a center back right now to be uh, in that position, taking a shot like that. Which is a quality look. It just uh, it sends a good message out there to to the young players. And just because whatever position you're playing, and just because you're a center back, it doesn't mean that um, that your ability uh, on the ball, that your skill um, has to be different than, than than a striker. Regardless of where you are on the field right now, especially in the modern age of, of, of football, it is important to to be able to to do all aspects of the games. And that's how you, as a player individually at this age, will get. You'll get more recognition, and your career will, will 
will reap the benefits of, of you learning different skills from different positions. We're going to check out another question from our Twitch stream here. Big soccer guy, what's a tougher environment to play in? This kind of heat or really cold slash wintry temperatures? Well, Jamie, you played in Minnesota. Playing in the cold? Playing in the cold is way worse. When you play in Minnesota, I would put heat warmers in my shoes. It wouldn't hurt to kick <laughs> the soccer that, ball. That's what I was going to ask no you. What were some tricks? This what were some tricks? Right here. Here's an opportunity. Salinas, a bit of a mishandle. Rebound. He made the stop. Great recovery. It's still in play. Finally goes over the end line. Uh, Salinas, a bit of a mishandle. Led to two chances. And Barso does end up with a corner. And a bit of a mishandle, yes. But uh, give credit to the to the shot right there. It wasn't easy. Caught the goalkeeping going the, the other way. But the way that he was able to bounce back and, and make that second save that tells, that tells you right there his determination to keep this game alive Salazar had the opportunity now the corner for Barca in the 63rd minute played short and they get another Barcelona is knocking on the door right now this is exactly these are exactly the moments when, when you want to get ahead set pieces being able to feed off that momentum of taking shots making sure you, you're keeping the defense and the goalkeeper guessing these are the times when you have to go and finish off the games big players center backs players uh, uh, that are good in the air this is when they make their money right here set pieces interesting look as well they've got three players over on this near side and then spacing to try to play this in Everybody started at the far post to work their way in. That's a unique look from a corner. Oof, right there. That's just skill. That's skill. That's a card right there. That's intelligent from Buckley. If There's Buckley no doesn't that, yeah. make that, if he doesn't make that challenge, Pickering's next ball is in behind and it's a foot race towards goal. And Pickering is just showing his, his speed and his strength, but not only that, but his footwork and his awareness to, to know to put himself in front of the defender and draw that draw that tackle and, and, and get the yellow card out of the player. Those are little things that matter. Buckley just got done a little bit with skill, but I, uh, if I'm somebody watching this, I think he's a lot smarter player for that foul that he just committed. Because if he is. doesn't and he lets it go, this could easily be 2-1 FC Dallas. One of those uh, instances where it's a smart foul. We're not um, advocating here for... for for a dirty play or anything like that, but those are things that uh, that go a long way, like we've talked about, making smart tackles, smart decisions at the in the right places at the right times. Texas heat beating down here in Frisco, but what a match we have going on in the round of 32 at U19, redirected on target, easy for Valdez. Have not called his name in quite a while, but. He was ready for his first touch in a long time. I'm looking forward to, to seeing the growth of, of, of Pickering. Um, he's a player that has impressed me a lot, and uh, not just because of the fact that, yes, he scored the goal, but the way that he scored the goal, the composure he had to cut the ball back, and, and doing the, the doing different things right here, like just showing us that he's great in the air, making sure that he's showing us that, that he's good with the ball, his dribbling, his awareness. These are all things that you're going to be able to see him um, at some point um, in the in the big stadium at Toyota Stadium in front of in front of the home fans. So a good time to mention here as we enter the 65th minute. As this is Lions, a shot Ooh. off the post, I believe. Took an odd carom, hit the post, still in the end for Barca. Boy, they have a lot of momentum right now as Dallas is able to win possession back and Pickering is tripped up. This will be a yellow. Let's not forget about that shot that we just witnessed right there. The way that we, <laughs> he was able to bend it far post, catching the goalie by surprise, doing a quick bicycle, just separating himself right there, maybe getting a deflection, but still... The fact that he put it far post to give himself the best chance possible. But it was really about the separation he made with that bicycle kick right there. It's so important. And then again, we see Pickering right here getting the ball and drawing contact and slowing the game down. He doesn't have many options going forward. So it's very smart for a player to slow the game down and wait for the contact and go down and give his team uh, a, a breather. Great chance for Lions there. So as it is level now, important to point out that if we get 
through full time the 90 minutes and we are still tied we will go to a shootout best of five kicks from the penalty mark and uh, if it is tied after five rounds then we move on to sudden death then obviously whoever wins moves on to the round of 16. We have not seen that on any of our broadcasts yet, but uh, that is going to bring some high-level tension, isn't it? Indeed it is, Justin. And, by the way, I mean NYC, welcome back. I like to see the locals, the local, uh, the local Twitch family. And for those of you just joining in right now, we have a very, very, very good match in our hands right now. Two very high-caliber teams, possession, uh, very good physicality, very good recognition of 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 IQ. You know, I think in we would, the game of soccer. Go on. I think we would all agree here that these are two teams that are pretty capable of making a, a deep run in this tournament that have just happened to draw each other in the first round. These are two, the round of two exactly two professional teams going head to head right now. It's a different level than we've watched, don't you think, Justin? I would agree. Getting a lot of comments here on the uh, hot versus cold yeah, that's right. debate. About that right now. Um, you know, Jamie, I learned yesterday that, that no matter how hot it is, Rodney takes a hot shower. But did you tell him why? It doesn't matter why. Well, I don't even know why you're talking about me uh, and my preference of cold and hot well, showers. So you know, well, because it's on, it's the debate, cold and hot. For me, like, no matter how cold it is, I can only drink iced coffee. You're right. But for me, I mean, I just still, no matter what, I can't, I can't get into the shower and just take a, take a cold shower. It's, it, the, it's like the ice, the, the ice tub is not for me. But I was in it every day, though, every other day. Don't get me wrong. Jamie, how, how big are those, uh, those small details right there? Recovery, right? Recovery is going to be important when you're, you're playing up to three games in four days here. Uh, you you got to make sure to take care of, of your body, and it's it's also been in the build-up to this point. You've got to be doing the right things day in and day out, so when you get to this, you don't all of a sudden try to turn on like a light switch and then expect your body to be able to respond and recover quickly. So you're going to have to, if you're the coaches, you're in the playoffs, so you can't really manage minutes at this point because if you do and you pull the player and you lose and the season's done this is a good build up to Buckley on the far side it certainly is another chance for Barcelona off a touch from the keeper great save by Salinas once again but it was really about the the run that uh, Lucas Wensky makes right there in in, in overlapping um, the his Barcelona teammate right there creating space and making sure that you keep now the, the, the FC Dallas defense guessing who's going to mark who right there. So that's a 2v2 situation and getting a, a clear look at goal right there, making a lot out of not so much. A couple of players about to come on for Dallas as the training staff will come on here. This question popped into my head with you guys talking about recovery. What are some of the things that stand out to both of you as, you know, the most important factors to being a professional athlete that nobody sees it's all behind the scenes stuff nutrition is is, is big and the reason i say that is just because it, it allows you it, it's energy right it's uh what you're putting into your body it's basically allowing you to to perform on the field so a lot of the things that we do see from professional clubs and independent uh club teams are, are those small factors maybe a club team have a, has a nutritionist. Maybe they have somebody on staff that is keeping track of what they're eating. Maybe somebody on staff that's making sure that they're taking ice baths after every game, which are the little things at this age as well, um, with the amount of games that they're playing, that are, are going to go a long way. So rec anything that is going to help you recover faster, regardless of where you are in your career, is going to um, it's going to put you in a different uh, in a different place. Rodney, I'll ask you this question: In the World Cup in 2018 with Costa Rica, what were some of the things that you guys did? in between games to try to recover uh that is a great question jamie and i think for us it was very important um believe it or not to be able to to see our families and to to have that freedom to to kind of let go of of, of of the game and, and get away from each other uh and sometimes you, you almost get sick of your teammates at the time you see them so much and especially being in in the world cup where it's 24-7, it's just your teammates, which you love, they're your brothers, they're your family, everybody, but being able to have your family and get a couple of hours to, to go and see them and, and your kids and whatnot, 
those are the things that really recharge at least they recharge my batteries what about what about from a playing standpoint that one's hugely important from a mental aspect what about yes. from a physical standpoint how do you guys bounce back after so, a game uh, yeah no uh, great point so from a physical standpoint it's 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 recovering uh in the in the gym right are you um it's it's okay to get back into the gym right after the game uh the next day and i'm not talking about lifting heavy weights but being able to do the exercises that are going to keep your muscles strong um so you're really preventing injury a lot of the things that that we do as professionals jamie as you know is is injury prevention and, and strengthening and making sure that you are able to to play the 90 minutes because ultimately if you're able to play 90 minutes you're going to be you're going to have a better chance of, of being selected coaches want players that can play 90 minutes interesting question here in the chat that uh maybe seems obvious but i'm not sure the answer is during hydration breaks like this really hot uh is water the best thing to drink or do you guys have maybe a uh, a secret formula for something that you like to have to recover like the secret the secret juice the secret sauce uh, I, I don't know um rodney rodney's high class he only wanted fiji water <laughs> that's what you used to drink at the club jamie Fl flown in flown in straight <laughs> from the tahitian water <laughs> It's like, uh, what, what is it, grown-ups, where they'll only drink Voss water? No, that was, yeah, Voss. You're really fancy, Jamie. Um, but, no, let's go. Real talk, I think that uh, that it's it's a balance, right? I need, I think nowadays there are so many different supplements and, and things that, that players are taking that are that are helping their recovery, things with uh, BCAA and them, and, and uh, keeping the right balance of the, the, I would say, what, the Gator lights, um, Electrolytes, all of those things that uh, that really make a difference for for cramping, especially in, in, in weather like this right now. Gatorade, a little bit of sugar, staying hydrated with water. I'll tell you the wildest one. Go ahead, Eddie Pope. We talked about him a little bit ago. Yeah. One thing I learned having a locker next to him, he would come in, and I'm not joking. Stick with me here. He would bring in a jar of pickles, like dill pickles, and he would chug pickle juice because it was so salty it helped replace and replenish some of the sodium levels that drop good skill from bryce jameson uh it would replace some of the sodium levels and and whatnot that you would lose throughout it and it would help you retain some water as well i love that couldn't i couldn't even take one I love sip it. of it and that's disgusting but i love it i've heard of that too but nowadays they they have they have uh supplements that can uh, substitute your your love for the pickle juice but some people are just old school and they want to go and get the pickle juice and and uh share with their locker mates very kind of eddie pope to offer though <laughs> what a legend by the way eddie pope shout out to eddie pope man he was an inspiration for me growing up seeing a a, a black player in the mls um holding the captain's armband that that was that was big for for players like me for for kids like me growing up in, in Maryland and being able to have him as an example and still look up to him because of what he's done uh, off the pitch. He's a great example to follow. So thank you, Eddie. Now you talk about some of the wonderful initiatives, like the Black Players for Changes. Mm. Dallas gets a big opportunity via the corner kick. Can't capitalize on that. But the progression of, of the game right now, both on the field and off the field, has never been better in Major League Soccer, I has agree. it? I agree with that. It, it is a beautiful thing to, to feel. It's good to see it, but it's good to feel it, too. Seventy-fifth minute here, round of 32 match in the U-19 division. Big tackle. Beautifully done by Luka Sawinski, doing it on both ends of the pitch today. Exactly. And that's a two-way player, right? That's a... That's a player that the coach will enjoy putting on the field, whether you do the work in the offensive uh, end, but if you're willing to do it again in, in the defensive third, that is, a, that is a player that a coach can always count on. And those players usually have uh, preference over, over those who are just uh, one dimension. They only offer one thing to the game. And again, we're here, Barcelona, Dallas, MLS next. These players right here showing what they have, showing their composure, their experience. And at the same time, it's good to see uh, some of the mistakes that they make because it's maybe uh, 
it's maybe about the, the idea as well because at, at, at times you're not going to have players that are on the same level but if the ideas are there there's always room for improvement and look at this ball right here spectacular chance for scott what a save rebound loose scott deflected what a recovery from barca what a chance right there scott had the game in his hands right there could have done better putting that away but what an amazing save right here and this is this is beaver right here coming in and and, and and changing the, the the game, making sure that he keeps Barcelona um, level, and, and that is so important. And, and the team can uh, can rally around him, and they can congratulate him, and they can keep him uh, motivated because little saves like well, this is a huge save, but saves like these, these are the ones that you want to praise your goalkeeper and keep him uh, get, acknowledge the fact that he he's keeping us in the game. Spectacular work from Austin Valdez, keeps it one one. And we are not too far away, potentially, from the spotlight on this match shifting to the two goalkeepers. We remain level and correct. It is Valdez. Right? Yes. Right. He got ten, ten bottles of sauce for this one. Look at this right here. It's a kick save right there. Just out of instinct. Tark did everything yeah, right, right in the buildup. Right there. It was slowing, just... his, slowing himself down in the buildup. Yeah, he got the ball played through. He took that extra half second. Exactly what you should do is a forward. Valdez just makes a crucial save. And if Bars is able to go on in advance, I think we're going to look back at that moment and say that could have been the key moment as to why Bars is able to move on. Right there. Boom. But then look at the recovery right there. The recognition. Inside the box. A chance here for Barca. Headed away from trouble. Back out to the midfield line. Justin Galanti, Rodney Wallace, Jamie Watson, our entire tremendous crew. Glad to be with you here from the Toyota Soccer Center in Frisco. 79th minute and still 1-1 between FC Dallas and the Barca Residency Academy. Fourth minute goal for Knight Pickering for Dallas. 20th minute goal for Bryce Jamison for Barca. That's all so far. Kaiser G8 on our on our Twitch feed. Uh, that is a strong, that is a strong right foot right there. That is not an easy save by any means. And you gotta give the goalkeeper credit when credit is due. Again, goalkeepers, they are uh, they're a bit isolated, right? So we always, for in my personal experience, I like to always make sure I keep my goalkeepers motivated. I keep them uh, keep them connected to the game and make sure that when they do make big plays that they are recognized for, for those big plays. They're such an important part to, to the team's success. Let's take another look at that whole sequence, the build-up, and then eventually the same. I mean, the connection between the two players right there to recognize, hey, 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 I'm open. This is something that we've done in training all the time. Put me in, put me in, uh, in the best position to score in between the lines and right there. But we have to also talk about the fact that that the player could have done a lot better um, putting the ball in the back of the net. These are crucial moments that will define. What a shot! These are these are plays that will define uh, your, your future. Believe it or not, you put your team ahead one, uh, two to one right here. It changes your whole trajectory. But you know what? Let's continue to, to talk about the, the good thing that these players are doing and the recognition and, and the balls that they're playing, but we also want to see the end result, which is what really matters. Tremendous opportunity here as Barcelona answering the Dallas chance. That was Jamison again, who is uh, getting stretched out on the pitch at the moment. 81st minute, you love to see the sportsmanship as he's getting some assistance from Slade Starnes here. It's been about this time in each of the matches over the last couple days that we've had that we've started to see a little bit of cramping 
Obviously, in the temperatures, not a shock. And while we have a moment, let's uh, let's take another look at our Adidas sounds of the game. Okay, and once we open, now we can play balls in behind a little bit later. Because at some point, they're going to press you. Once you break them, what are they doing? They're just dropping back. Okay, so once you break them in here, when they drop back, open so we can keep the ball moving. Make sense? Okay, it's here for the taking. Okay, it's here for the taking. We need to be better with the football, manage the football better, demand and force your teammates to stop giving the ball away. You need the football. You need it, you need it, you need it. This L Love that from... John Gall, the head coach for FC Dallas, it's here for the taking. That's what he had to say to his team. Motivation, obviously, so important when it's a warm day like this and you have a couple minutes left to try and find a winner. Yeah, and then sometimes it, it's a it's a coach's job not to just talk about the, the tactical and, and the technical ability and the game plan, but also how do you motivate your players? How do you get the best out of your players, especially um, with 10 minutes left? How do you get the? How do you get your players to really dig deep and make sure that that they're able to finish out this game strong and get the result that that they desire? So, for a coach to to be able to come up to me, for example, and tell me um, how I, how do I, how do I want to be defined? Um, we can still win this, and to stay positive and to and to basically give me the the go ahead and the confidence to to push through and win this game, it means a lot. So to have a coach like that on your side is a definitely positive. Definitely positive. Another chance just Ooh. wide. It was Scott again. Scott is heating up. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some uh, a couple of bottles of hot sauce to Scott right now. He's doing his thing. He's putting himself in, in, in the best position right now to be successful to win this game. But I mean, look at this ball right here. Just the recognition alone. That little flick, that connection between the two players. And that is not an easy challenge, but also give credit to the goalkeeper right there, making it very hard for Scott to, to really get a clear look at goal right here just by hesitating and making... He was ready to make the same save again. Very first, the hot sauce, a hot sauce packet. That's pretty funny. You know, with goalkeeping, right, what do you see on Instagram and, and Twitter and the highlights, right? You see saves. But there's so much more to goalkeeping than that. Cutting off angles, whatever it might be. Little things like that, right? Sometimes they don't even have to make the save because of their positioning on the field. Touch right there. That's quality. That's technique. Recognition of where your players are. That was Emmanuel Martinez who also had that pass to set up Scott on the most recent chance. Emmanuel Martinez is showing his uh, his qualities on the ball and in his his field awareness, basically knowing where he is and knowing where his teammates are without really having to take a glance. And that shows as well that the team is is connected and they're in sync and they have a they have a, a good understanding. And that that comes from training. That comes from doing little drills and training that are going to allow you to to basically play a blind pass knowing that your teammate is right there. What do you think about this comment? The best defense in modern soccer is possession of the ball. Here's a chance, chance for right Barca! Here. Off the post! What an opportunity for Sawinski. So close. This game is really heating up right now and this is exactly what we're here to watch. We're here to watch these, these young players really push themselves to the limit and, and, and become stars and this is how you become a star by by putting yourself in these situations unfortunately hits the bar the goalkeeper does the best he could right there but this is exciting this is what we're here to watch justin what was your comment uh the comment in the chat said the best defense in modern soccer is possession of i love ball. i love that? that i love that i love that statement right there because if you have the ball then ultimately you you make it easier for yourself to to, to win the game, right? So being able to keep the way the ball away from, from the other team will ultimately set you up for, for success. And I will add to that comment and say that um, your first line of defense is uh, is uh, part of your, your your attacking, right? Your attack system, how you pressure the ball, how quickly can you win the ball, get it back, and and, and, and be right there, ready to attack. And that's one of the things that playing uh, when I was playing at NYCFC with uh, Patrick Vieira as your coach and David. Villa was our striker they wanted us to get the ball as fast as possible so that we could be, really be as close as possible to to get goals and make it easier on ourselves to, to get ahead 
two here. Recognition by the two players. Time running late. For a main level after full time. It'll be the kicks from the penalty mark shootout. Best of five to determine who moves on to the round of 16. Beautiful ball ahead. This one off a of deflection, still in the box for Barca. But Dallas able to clear it out to Scott. Good skill from the Dallas players not to be not to be so shook or rattled by, by any of the pressure that Barcelona's putting on. No panic in dangerous areas, right? I love this. And here we have Pickering, a player that we've been that we've been seeing grow throughout this game. It's that kind of emotion I want to see right there, right? That's what we want to see from Marcel, from any single player, right? Whatever level it is, right there, just the simple, simple gesture of, of being so excited to, to make that tackle. Yeah, let's check in uh, with Jamie quickly, see what he has. Fantastic point you've just made, Miles Lyons gets up and celebrates and at this point this moment in the game that kind of tackle that stops that effort from pickering driving it to the back post that could potentially be the one that stops that stops the goal scoring opportunity from happening and it's a really important moment in the game miles lyons you saw what it meant to him to be able to make that diving sliding challenge to, to stop the attack that could be the difference for fc barcelona he hyped me up with that jamie Nice move in the midfield, and they'll let them play the advantage here. Barcelona on attack. This is Castillo waiting for a bit of support. It'll be a throw for Barcelona here in the 88th minute. And maybe I'd like to see these two uh, Barcelona play. I like to see uh, Velasquez. I like to see Joe Velasquez not want to get the ball so close to his teammate right there. Maybe um, making it a little bit difficult for for Dallas to. To, to, to get easily adaptive to the defensive end. So why not just create a little bit of space between you and your teammates so then that you can create some space to switch the ball and switch the point of attack and get going on the other end. Where's Eddie Pope at with the pickle juice? That's what I'm asking. You know, it's uh, it might it might be interesting if we get to the kicks from the penalty mark shootout. Just you know, who is available for that? Because we've had a lot of players like that cramp up in the last couple minutes here. Let's uh, check in with Jamie once again. When you look at maybe some of the reasons some of these players are staying on are because uh, is because they are one of the players that will be taking a penalty kick, um, a, a penalty from the spot. So while they may normally in other circumstances be an easy candidate for a substitution, John Gall may be looking at his defender right now that's on the ground, Slade Starnes again, and saying, I know you're cramping. And any other situation, I would take you out, but the season is on the line. So you're going to have to just piece it together over the next couple of minutes to get over the line, to get to the end, see this game through, because he may be one of the five players that he has in mind to take a penalty kick. Great stuff, Jamie. And um, by the way, Jamie and Justin, I just uh, I just took a glance and I saw Emmanuel Martinez basically Wait, talk to to his teammate Tori Scott and telling him, "This is your time. This is when we. This is when you step up. These are these are moments for you. You're a big time player. Make the make the decision to, to put the team behind and, and, and put the team on your back and, and get us this goal. And I love that communication and that trust in between players, especially at this age." Done. Well, the winner of this one will move on to the round of 16 and play the winner of Bethesda SC and Empire United. And we only have a few moments left to see if it's going to be decided in a shootout or before that, five extra minutes added on here to the second half. Five extra minutes. I think that's fair. It's a fair assessment by the referee. You know, it was interesting yesterday, that match between Atlanta and Baltimore at U16, where we were discussing, you know, Baltimore would actually probably prefer the match go to the shootout. And this one, I mean, it's been 
pretty even, and, and I don't know, I mean, what do you think? If, would either side be happier? I would say no about this going potentially to a shootout. Uh, it's a good job defensively there by Dallas to withstand a potential varsity chance. It's been pretty even. I mean, it has been pretty even, and uh, even in, in the best way possible with the most uh, respect to these both of these uh both of these sides, the way that they've uh, approached this game and the football that they're playing, and also give credit to the coaching staff because these players are literally following what they're being taught, and it's good to see um, young players so close to the professional uh, level. Shout out to our Twitch family. Again, we're here, we're live. Let us know your comments, questions, uh, predictions. Please fill in. We're here. And I love that Thomas G. Uh, uh, Thomas Nome basically saying that this is a beautiful game. We can enjoy it, whatever you want to call it. We are witnessing uh, talented individuals put themselves uh, in, posi in positions to be successful. Castillo feeds one through. There's a little pattern plays right there. Now, can we get the delivery? Can they get it a shot away? Instead, it'll be a corner here for Barcelona as we approach the 93rd minute and that's a good action not just because of the fact that yes they got a corner of it but it's a good action because of the recognition of playing the ball out wide coming inside a little one two give and go and then finding the third man running wide right there and and those are the little things that are going to make such a big difference in the in the careers of these players just remembering these little patterns and these little plays these are things that you can keep in your in your bag of tools Can we get a goal in these, in, in these last three minutes? I want some match predictions. So, for those of you following along on Twitch, corner sent in, headed away from trouble. Time running late here. Dallas sideline was asking for a whistle, didn't get it. Now it's Barca on the counter. Foul in the midfield against Dallas as Miles Lyons was tripped up. Miles Lyons has been a, a very good offensive uh, threat for threat for, uh, for for Barcelona. Look at the effort and intensity level here. He's receiving the ball in high places on the field, making it easier for his players to to really get adjusted in their in their respective positions. But they're playing such a high line right now. They're taking a lot of risk. And I'm, and it's calculated risk. It's not anything wild. It's not anything crazy. They're putting the best players behind the ball and making sure that they get the best opportunity to get crosses in and, and, and get the ball. But at the same time, knowing that they don't want to be countered. So they're organized. As you can see, look at this. They're setting the tone right now of, of how they want to attack. Dallas is a bit tired as well. So they're taking advantage of that. But Dallas is the... They're not naive. Look, they're waiting for the counter right now. And here they come with a little bit of speed. This is Scott once again. Scott has had some great chances today. Almost had one there, but a good play by Valdez. Individual effort by, by, by Scott, but could he have used his teammates? Could he Could he have used a, um, a pickering on the left side right there? Could have, could, could have they gotten creative and, and combined on that? Maybe. Do I like the fact that he took on a couple of players and, and, and decided to 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 go to goal? I don't mind it. Sometimes as a striker, you have to be a bit selfish. Um, your teammate can be upset with you for not passing the ball. You never obviously want to do it in a malicious way. But let's take a look at the run again right here. Had, an, had, a, had an option to use the teammate right there. But again, respect the decision that he made. And he wanted to... He wanted to get that goal. Obviously, if you pick your head up, you know that Pickering is right there, a player that we know can put the ball in the back of the net. But the confidence that, that this player, Scott, has shown and has displayed, is uh, it's a good sign for the growth. So that is the whistle for the end of full time, and we will go to the shootout. Best of five kicks from the penalty mark with a berth in the round of 16 on the line. 
take a look at the rules here. Proceed directly to the kicks. If the score's after, or tied, I should say, after five rounds, we go to sudden death. And guys, now the focus shifts to the two goalkeepers, Austin Valdez for Barcelona and Aaron Salinas for Dallas. So we're going to get this set up. But what a competitive match, and what an excellent 90 minutes of soccer that was. And uh, now we move to the all-exciting shootout. And uh, before we do that, let's take a look back at some of our highlights from the match, brought to you by Adidas. Again, very early, Knight Pickering was able to get Dallas on the board. Knight Pickering doing what he does best, and that's running between the lines and making sure he uses his body and his skill to separate himself, cut back, get a shot on the goal, get a deflection, but still, it's not about the deflection, it's about what he did to get to where he was right there, and to get the reward of making that run. To see the excitement yes. in the young player's face right there shows it all. And then in the 20th minute, the response from Barcelona and Bryce Jameson. Bryce Jameson right here making the best out of his chances, being able to be in the right place at the right time, being patient, making sure that he is able to create a little bit of space with the fake and putting it between the defender's legs and the near post of the goalkeeper. So that made the score 1-1, and then guess what? Did not change the rest of the way. Couple chances though, and Tariq Scott had a good one here. Tariq Scott again, putting himself in, in, in a good place with a good run, great ball by the way, but could we have seen better from him? Yes, but we have to give credit to the goalkeeper right here to be able to make a double save and to make sure that he keeps his uh, his composure there. It was, it's, it's incredible, and it shows a lot about the maturity of the player. All right, so now let's move on towards the shootout and talk about this a little bit. First, let's go down to our sideline reporter, Jamie Watson. I was just down here as they did the coin toss to the side and the ever-important captain for FC Dallas, Lade Starnes, took the initiative called heads heads did not fail him he won the toss fc dallas will go first we'll go down to the end kicking towards the stadium in just a moment it's tense down here there was a lot of players that were being encouraging the ones that were on the bench that will not partake in the penalty kicks from the mark they were talking to the players trying to hype the guys up trying to make sure that they know they've got the right positive mind frame going into this well thanks so much jamie and uh it's High pressure right now. There's no other way to put it. Your life in the playoffs in this tournament comes down to this five round shootout. Kicks from the penalty mark. And the spot in the round of 16 is on the line. What do you think, uh, right, not what do you think, what goes into as a coach deciding, you know, who are your players that are most apt to take these? It's a it's a collaboration of, of the of the coach recognizing who he can count on, and uh, also the honesty from the players to understand um, how comfortable they feel taking a PK. But usually you have a core players that know um, they're confident and they know themselves and they want to take these PKs. And there's some players that don't want to take them, and that's okay. Did you like it taking the PKs? Yeah. Me personally, I like to uh, score more goals in the run of play. Um, in between the, the so 90 no. minutes, so so no. <laughs> Jamie? Penalty, penalties are not for everybody, but I, I, the way I looked at it, I said if my fate of the season and my team's fate of the season was going to be down to a penalty spot 12 yards away, I wanted to be the one to have some sort of say-so in it, so I always wanted to take a penalty. Big dog Jamie right there, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't always go in, but I wanted to take one at least. I think he just outfit you a little bit. No, that's okay. you got to support him, you know what I mean? That's exactly what we're talking about. It's a collaborative Ronnie, effort right there. Ronnie makes a good point. Though. I like There's to score during the game, and Jamie feels comfortable scoring in the PKs. I honestly wasn't the most comfortable at being in, in that situation. Um, and how difficult is it, you know, when a coach asks you, hey, are you comfortable? I mean, you want to you wanna do it, but you also have to be honest. Is we're going to get started here as Dallas will go first. This is Pickering, who scored the goal, and he will go up against Austin Valdez. Again, best of five to move on to the round of 16. Knight Pickering, 10 goals this season. We'll start things off against Valdez. Pickering, and he scores. Valdez guessed right, but couldn't quite get to it. Solid PK from Pickering. 
knowing exactly where he wanted to put the ball. Very hard for the goalkeeper there to 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 save the ball. No matter how the effort was, he put it so far away that it was almost uh, um, I wouldn't say impossible, but it was uh, very difficult to save today. Very big take from, uh, from the leader right now of, of the club. So one at nil in the first round for Dallas. And now for Barca, Lucas Sawinski. 15 goals this season. He'll go up against Salinas. Lucas Sawinski levels this at one. Perfectly placed, wasn't it? Put it in a position where where, where the goalkeeper uh, had to make a, a difficult save. Honestly, he, he looked for a top angle. He got the goal. When the goal they say when the goalkeeper touches that he could have made a save, but I mean you gotta give credit to to the player taking the kick. And if it goes in, it goes in. It doesn't even matter how it goes in, right Jamie? Handing the ball, John, every time. At this point you just gotta make sure put it on target and you're right, as long as it gets over the line. Confidence they'll know where you're going, don't let anything the goalie does waver or change you, give you any doubt, confidently put it where you want to go. Diego Hernandez finishes. 2-1 Dallas. I saw swagger from him right there as soon as he lined up right there, the little two hop steps that he took. And these are things that they, they don't just come from uh, out of nowhere. These players practice PKs. You have to have uh, a personality. You have to have your own style of taking PKs. It's an art form, I'd say. It really is. It's confidence, but it also it means precision in that moment, Rodney. You've got to be able to believe in what you're going to do, but also after playing 90 minutes in this heat, it is incredibly difficult. So matching that execution with where you are physically and mentally is so difficult. So 2-1 Dallas. In the second round, here's Miles Lyons. And it is 2-2. Miles, though. Miles Lyons is hyping me up. I want to be his teammate right now. With that energy. He's a player that, in my eyes, from what I can see right now, he's a leader by example. I don't know necessarily if he wears the captain's armband or not, but by his expressions, his demeanor, his personality, that allows me to know that he is a leading by example now here's Scott who had so many opportunities in the run of play in the match as we enter the third round and he scores wow Valdez got his left hand on regardless of how it goes in how close you are the ball goes in the back of the net that's what counts a reminder this is best of five if it's tied after five rounds, we go to sudden death. And the winner advances to the round of 16 to take on the winner of Bethesda SC and Empire United. This is Moises Mondragon against Aaron Salinas. And it's level at three. Now if you're a goalkeeper, right, your thought process goes to let me stop one. And that's basically what it what it's all about. Um, um, being around the, the game for such a long time, um, especially with Sean. Cha, I heard Sean Johnson say, and he always uh, reiterated this: it was one play at a time. And for a goalkeeper in a PK shootout, is one save at a time. All you got to do is just make one save and put your team in the best position to win the game. Cesar Elizalde. Four three Dallas. Decisive. And there you go. You know, you go up to your own goalkeeper and say, this is you. You got this next. You know what I mean? You make the save. It's your turn. A lot of points from these players. They support each other. I love to see it. It, it, it matters so much to, to be able to know that your teammate is counting on you and you can count on them. So now it'll be Joey Velasquez for Barca. Round four. Trying to get it to 4-4. Four, four. No kick has been missed yet. Velasquez. He waited a bit, and Salinas cheated, and Velasquez took advantage. Velasquez is hyped after this goal right here, going up to his, his goalkeeper and saying, this is, this is your turn now. It's your turn now, my homie. Let's go. All right, to round five. Where are we at right now? 4-4? Yeah, we are. 4-4. Who will win this game? Emmanuel Martinez for Dallas. This is where the pressure 
ratchets up. Mm. Hey. Martinez. Oh, oh, so oh, I've never seen that in my life. I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna have to take that and steal it and, and then put that in my uh my book of recipes right there. Oh my goodness, take another look. Yo, I need to see that again right there. <laughs> so he turns his back as if he's there, just alright, hold on, what am I and there he goes. So here we go in round five. This is it if Clap it up, Salinas can make a save. Buckley hesitates. Buckley, and we go to a sixth round. No quit, huh? Love to see it. Well, keep, keep in mind now, these are the players that were not in the initial five. So now we get to the point of where it was players that didn't step up or weren't in the top five. Now there's some question of confidence or self-doubt. Especially when it is now sudden death, obviously. It'll be Timothy Ospina. Round six, sudden death. Round of 16 is on the line. Beautifully executed. And once again, Barca must finish. What a game we have on our hands right here. What a shootout. It's been a truly, it's been a special match. Jamie, what do you think? Well, this is where the coin toss becomes so important. FC Dallas always in an advantageous position when you start the round in sudden death because they get to apply the pressure. So now, as number four, Nathan Hurtado steps up, he knows he has to make this each and every time. That's why every team who wins the coin toss wants to go first. It's a preferable position. Hurtado against Salinas. Hurtado. Yeah! And Dallas moves on. moment and one these FC Dallas players will never forget and they will move on to the round of 16 in the U19 division as they take out the Barca Residency Academy in the shootout this 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 brings me goosebumps right here just to see the the unity and the joy that it brings to and what it means to these players especially being able to to get the win not only in the pk shootout um but the fact that they're at home they're dallas they're representing uh they're representing the club and they just got an opportunity to beat uh, a team like barcelona regardless if they're from the u.s or from the academy uh from barcelona or the academy uh, it's a fantastic performance from fc dallas and aaron salinas steps up in the zero uh and when the game needed it fc dallas on the back foot for large portions of that second half, but they did everything that they needed to do to get to this position to level the playing field. Barcelona, over the course of the match, had their moments in which they were in the ascendancy, hit the post twice in the second half, weren't able to get that goal. FC Dallas knew as the game carried on if they could get to penalties. They believed in their ability. They go six for six, and all they needed was one save. One moment from their goalkeeper, they got it. Aaron Salinas with a heroic moment to push his team on into the round of 16. Well, uh, I don't know a better word than awesome to describe what we saw over the last two or so hours. And there is our Adidas player of the match. It is Aaron Salinas who made the save in the shootout. And he is our man of the match presented by Adidas, Rodney. Aaron Salinas right here making sure that he does not miss this he wants to put this he wants to put this behind him and make sure that he wins the game and then they, there you see his players congratulating him right there by making that huge save what an effort from a goalkeeper what an effort from dallas what an effort for the club in general just to see the maturity and the growth and the determination regardless of how much pressure you have for a young player to be able to perform at this level and make a save that with that magnitude it means a lot and it'll go a long way in his career as well no doubt about it as that is a moment he will never forget and that is a fired up group of players 
for FC Dallas. Well, that's a great way to wrap up our coverage today. Remember, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Montreal and Empire United in a 17U showcase game. For the rest of today, though, we will say so long. For my partners, Rodney Wallace and Jamie Watson, as well as our outstanding crew, I'm Justin Galanti saying good afternoon. Dallas and Barca, a great match, and it's 6-5 Dallas in the shootout to move along.